Hey guys, it's Nico from Steel City Vintage, and today we're going to be talking about a perpetual calendar from a prestigious watch brand that is under $10,000. The old moniker of perpetual calendars is by the time you're able to afford one, you can no longer see it. Um, kind of giving note to the fact that perpetual calendars um, are rather expensive, you know, relative for pretty much anyone out there. Uh, but the fact that you can get a perpetual calendar from a prestigious watch brand for under $10,000, I think represents great uh, value. So for today's watch, we're going to be talking about the Blanc Pond 5395. Now, a little bit of history. Blanc Pond is the oldest watch manufacturer in history. They did stop for a little bit, which allows Vacheron to have claim to the moniker that they are the oldest watchmaking house in continuous production. Because like I said, Blanc Pond did stop, I believe around, you know, the mid 20th century for a bit until it was revived in the early 1980s. The 1980s um, represented a release of six masterpieces by Blancpain, um, this being one of them. One of those six masterpieces was, uh, the case was manufactured by Hagman, who also went on to uh, manufacture Patek Philippe's uh, minute repeaters. The case quality is there, obviously. Now, this reference is one, like I said, that I think represents a tremendous amount of value. Um, I think that not only does, you know, because there's other perpetual calendars out there, you know, but what makes this uh, a good buy or a lot of watch for the money is all the components that go in. You know, you want to have a high-end complication, but you don't want to sacrifice in terms of dial um, manufacturing or case manufacturing and things of that nature or the movement that's inside there as well. Starting off with the case, it has a stepped case that's in a precious metal and the shape of the case is something that really harkens back to watch designs of the 1980s and 90s. Um, it has a stepped bezel, which like I said is very characteristic of the time and it's 33 millimeters now thankfully watches are trending towards uh going back to i wouldn't even say small i would just say normal size for a long time there it, the pendulum had swayed to larger um case sizes and i just think that going back to your roots is always a good thing um, meaning that having a small watch is supposed to be an accessory not the the main course and ha sometimes these larger cases can lead to um, more of an audacious look, which doesn't really jive with my style, but you know, it, it may still fit for some people. But like I said, I, I'm happy that they're going back um, and the trend is leaning more towards normal sized uh, watches. Now, this is classically considered a dress watch, um, so, you know, so having that smaller case diameter, I think does lend itself to um, being f worn in a, more of a variety of occasions. Formally, it's easier to um, kind of slip underneath a cuff and things of that nature. But um, as we'll see in future posts and videos, I do encourage people to start to um, explore what uh, their style is in terms of, you know, classically a dress watch, but this can be worn casual as well. I think it just has to do with um, your confidence in wearing a timepiece of that stature and also your strap choice. But then going on into the movement, the movement was made by Frederic Piguet, which was only rivaled at the time by JLC. Frederic Piguet was known for making movements that were very, very thin, but yet robust, um, and had already long developed himself as a um, you know high-end movement manufacturer by the time they partnered with Blancpain in the early 1980s. So you're really not giving up anything from that standpoint to compare um, the stepped bezel perpetual counter cases by brands like Audemars Piguet and um, Vacheron. They were using um, Jaeger La Cultura. So they weren't using in-house movements either, um, but yet, you know, at the same time, Frederick Piguet and, and JLC, I think, especially considering the time, were very, very comparable. Now, 
the caliber that went into the step bezel um, perpetual calendar cases for Vacheron and um, Audemars Piguet ended up having a longer history. That caliber 920 was used in the Royal Oak as well as those perpetual calendars and still being used by companies like Vacheron today. So, um, you know, hindsight looking back, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely, I would say, a step above. But, you know, by the same token, I don't think you're giving up much from the movement here. Now, this movement is the 5395, 53 being the base model and the um, 95 being the calendar module that was placed on top of it, also made by Frederick Piguet. So this one being it's like a first generation doesn't have leap year indicator. So from a technical standpoint, you are kind of giving up uh, a, a little bit there, but I think that lends itself to having more dial symmetry. When you get rid of that leap year indicator, which I think from a design standpoint, although you know, valuable from a technical standpoint, from a design standpoint, it's very difficult to fill it in to the layout of a watch. So this does lend itself to a more symmetrical and cleaner look in my opinion. Now they did go on to produce one with a leap year indicator. So that was a 5495. Um, that one came out a little bit later, obviously still use the same calendar module, but um, the base caliber went from 53 to 54, still obviously Frederick Piguet. Then from, in terms of a dial layout, I think that this one really represents a lot of what the original QPs coming out from the late 1970s, early 1980s um, were all about. So the subdials are printed on rather than recessed. So Audemars Piguet, for example, their 5548 also came out with printed dials. I think the only one that came out right out of the jump with recessed dials was Vacheron's. Um, their, um, even their first series perpetual counters had a, a little bit of a recessed dial. The printed sub dials does give it a more nostalgic and vintage look in my opinion. Um, that's really going to be personal preference. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not trying to say that the quality is the exact same as, you know, the big three. Obviously, anytime you're you're paying up for something, um, you know, there's, there's going to be a reason why it costs more outside of just the fact of, you know, name brand recognition and things of that nature. Like going back to the dial, Vacheron was using a lapis stone for the moon disc, um, the moon phase, a disc for that. So in terms of materials, they're, they're definitely using higher end materials. Um, the finishing on the dial on both the APs and the Vacheron um, is higher quality. You know, that's without, without a doubt. Um, but, you know, like I said, I don't think that you're giving up too much, um, you know, going with a watch like this. I think that relative for what it is, it's definitely undervalued right now. Um, you know, and it's a great opportunity to pick something up um, that's, you know, high end watchmaking for a price that really doesn't make sense at the moment. Um, but I am I'm very excited to get this one into the watch shop. It's not the first perpetual calendar that I've handled. I've handled many, um, but it's the first one to get into the watch shop. And, um, you know, I'm really happy to be able to offer it to you guys. Like I said, I think that it represents a lot of value. The fact that you can get a perpetual calendar for under ten thousand um, dollars and well under at this point um, we have it priced at about eighty five hundred via bank wire um, you know i think is like i said i think it's a lot of a lot of watch for the money and you're not really giving up that much from a quality standpoint either um, which is you know what value is all about you want to be able to get something like a high-end complication without giving up you know um, the quality in case construction or dial manufacturing and i think that this represents that um so thank you guys for tuning in if you like the video please like and subscribe it really does help us out um you know i'm going to continue to try to get these videos out for you and hopefully um provide some information some history some good quality content and uh, you know i can't thank you enough for all your support